Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again. That's for art. Um, you know, I didn't want to go in my office with the laptop, so I came out here and it's super bright. I can read, but uh, as I look at the camera, it's just going to be bright, so it doesn't matter. Anyways, I'm going to read more of our book, Poison Power, and we are on which chapter? I think it's chapter 11, isn't it? We're beyond chapter 10. Shoot. It doesn't say the chapter. Hold on, I apologize. You guys probably know. We're on chapter 11. I cannot believe it. Uh, must we hold out for the uh, cold corpses? And we're on page 250, new paragraph. The essence of this prayer comes through in the forthright statement of ignorance. Excuse me, I'm going to start that again. The essence of this prayer comes through in the forthright statement of ignorance made by the International Commission on Radiological Protection. 83. Because of the need for guidance in this regard, the Commission in its 1958 recommendations suggested a provisional limit of 5 rems per generation for the genetic dose to the whole population from all sources additional to natural background radiation and to medical exposures. The Commission believes that this level provides reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs in the foreseeable future. It should be emphasized that the limit may not in fact represent a proper balance between possible harm and probable benefit because of the uncertainty in assessing the risks and the benefits that would justify the exposure." Unquote. Wow. That's from the International Commission on Radiological Protection. Wow. Well, where is that coming from? It doesn't say. Anyways, it is very important to note that the International Commission says that this level provides reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs in the foreseeable future. Is this the concern for health or for the technology? The Commission goes on to admit uncertainty both with aspects to risks and benefits. It is almost unbelievable that an official standard recommending body would suggest allowing such exposure in the face of an overt admission of its own ignorance concerning hazards. St. Louis. But this is the record of such bodies over and over again. The public must realize the implications. I hope somebody from St. Louis is starting to listen to this book because those people need to realize that these guys that say they know what they're doing with radiation have no idea. If the errors in the earliest days of the atomic technology are to be excused on the basis of ignorance or on the basis of a simple lack of awareness concerning sound public health principles, how shall we excuse the fact that rationality has not entered the picture to this date? Wow. In our discussion of Q, we express dismay that anyone might even suggest waiting for some catastrophic consequence of accidental exposure to elevate late effect hazards of the poison. Yet this is precisely what the various standard setting bodies for radiation exposure are doing and have been doing for many years. <coughs> this is so outrageous. A number of groups of humans actually have been exposed to ionizing radiation in high doses. Hiroshima Nagasaki atomic bomb survivors, 14,000 British subjects with arthritis of the, same, of the spine treated with x-rays. The experts have seized upon these groups with enthusiasm. They have pronounced that as the cancer and leukemia corpses appear in these human groups, they will be counted. Only when a sufficient number of corpses have, been, have appeared, 
say, from lung cancer, well, the experts accept that lung cancer is produced by radiation. This is exactly what they're doing in St. Louis. We need numbers. If these men determine that too many cancers and leukemias are occurring, the allowable radiation dose to the public will then be lowered. Incredible as it may seem, this barbarian approach to public health practice is truly occurring. And still to this date, this book was written in 1972, still to this date they're still doing it. Why is all this appalling? Suppose the accidental exposure at Hiroshima and in Britain had not occurred. There would have been no new information Presumably, nothing at all would have been done about the allowable exposure levels, which turned out to be so disastrous. Now we know it takes 5 to 20 years before the various forms of leukemia and cancer show themselves after radiation exposure. If we sat by, waiting for each type of cancer to show up in the accidentally exposed human groups, decades might go by with hundreds of millions of People are overexposed to radiation and not a finger lifted to stop it. Exactly what is going on to this day. And that is exactly what's going on still to this day. Fukushima is hitting five years, folks. Cancers, We, you think 2016 is going to be fun? I mean, this is the last day of 2016. Or 15. We're headed for tomorrow is January 1st, 2016. And I tell you what, my gut tells me this. We're going to have to really put our courage feet on. Because we're going to start seeing people get sick. Big numbers. Leukemia is the earliest cancer to occur following radiation exposure. Surfacing some five years. Hello, Fukushima. Obviously, before five years pass for the exposed human groups... It seemed that no cancers or leukemias had occurred among them. These standard setters felt relieved. Then the five-year mark had passed, and leukemia did appear as an effect of radiation in the Japanese and British subjects. The standard setters generous, generously took due notice of the fact. Leukemia, they said, had indeed been produced by human, in humans by radiation. Now the manuals were rewritten and leukemia was listed at last as a late hazard of radiation exposure. A late hazard. Notice how they call it a late hazard. Fur. What about the other forms of cancer that were known to follow radiation in experimental animals? The experts steadfastly refused to consider any of these. Not having seen any human corpses, they refused to admit they might exist and would not lower the population exposure standard accordingly. I'm going to stop here. I'll come back, you guys. i got to answer the phone. Be right back. Ciao.